You're watching Caribbean Vibrations, and we are sitting here with award-winning producer, playwright, and co-founder of Crossfield House Productions, Mr. Troy Crossfield. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, doing good, doing good, Alan. Thank you for having me so much on Hello, Caribbean Vibrations. Well, we're glad you're here. I mean, we've had the opportunity to see you since, I think, 2016 now. You've been putting out Crossfield House Productions, putting on all these amazing plays we've been hearing about. You started theater, but you've been for making a foray into films. And I want to ask you first about something that we watched, we found very powerful, which was Silence of the Land. Tell us the inspiration behind that film. Okay, so Silence of the Land, I want to shout out my, um, my business partners, Sharona Osborne, Tasha Harris, Adila Carter, Tisha Reed. Um, they're my partners in CrossFit House Production. So Sharona, myself, and uh, Tasha, we wrote um, Silence of the Land, uh, directed by Sharona Osborne. It's in the lives of um of our of our two stars, our male and female counterpart, and pretty much we are going through their day, you know, and it just really shows you what it is to be like black people going through their day, which is why we call it Silence of the Land, because like these two black people, you know, um, Kadeem is Kadeem is going going to applying for jobs. Um, Jamelia, she's she's coming from work and has these and has these interactions with with white folks during their day you know um Jamila's being pulled over by the police um Kadeem is having issues um applying for another job at at his work you know trying to trying to just better himself and like these are struggles these are daily struggles that we all deal with you know but like you just get to see a lens of like wow oh my gosh this is like in the daily lives of like these people, like, you know, there's white privilege all around us, you know? Um, there's a lot of us who are just like bothered for no reason, you know? So, and, and you know, this year is really, you know, not even, I mean, we could spend whole 30 minutes talking about this whole uh, plant pandemic and, 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 you know, since everything has been on the spotlight, you know, on us really hard since the top of the top of the year, um, but we wanted to like really just tell our story of this piece of like this happens to us daily. And um, so the whole point of the silence of the land is for us to no longer be silent anymore. Really like Science of a Land is just because we just want to show a piece for us you know, the things that we go through daily and us deciding not to be silent anymore about it. Mm -hmm. And dealing with all those microaggressions, as we say, yes. on a daily, daily basis. And I appreciate that because, I mean, that is a, one of your four ways into films. And speaking of films, we're going to start with one of your plays. I heard so much press and so much good things about A Little White Lie. So for those who don't know about it, tell us about that play. This play, Little White Lie, um, deals with a gentleman. His name is Michael Myers. His mother is actually on her deathbed. She's dying because of cancer. And what her request is that she wants to meet Michael Myers' you know, girlfriend, whatever, before she dies. She wants to make sure that her son is good. But what the whole, when the whole lie comes to perspective is that like, you know, Michael has been dealing with trauma since he was a kid. He was abused by his father. Um, he wasn't sure who he was as a man. So he was dealing with, um, I would like to say some some issues of of male identity, you know, mm -hmm. not sure where he fit in the whole spectrum of things. So he asked his co-worker to come with him to meet his mom and tell this whole lie mm -hmm. when that just pretty much exploded into this whole thing of like, here comes the truth. I need you to come with me to my family dinner this weekend. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to process two things right now. 
too, the white lie app is gonna change the way people communicate. Damn. Damn. You didn't answer my text. Get out. Oh. Mom, Mrs. Myers, are you okay? I need a baby. My mother's sick. Mm -hmm. Stacy, I'm falling in love with you. So they pretty much just, you know, exploring his traumas, exploring some of his co co-workers' traumas, and like really just finding the truth at the end of the day. So, so yeah, it, it was a, it was a, it was a very great story. A lot of people were like, "Oh my gosh," cringing, and 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 I love that because it is, it becomes talk pieces, you know. So, so White Lie was definitely a talk piece. It was something that was for us, mm -hmm. um, something that, you know, that we don't really deal with in our homes, talking about traumas, abuse, and all the kind of stuff. Um, uh, and a lot of times we look away. And I know, think that's and, a very good point because I think one of the things you've talked about in, in these different pieces is also not, trauma is something that, we, that we're starting to deal with, but also being a male and showing vulnerability. I noticed that's been a subject. Why is that something that's an issue that you like to tackle in whether it's your plays or your films? Wow, that's a great question. And I guess for me, it's authentic to me because I've, you know, being vulnerable is something that I've tried to be, you know, later on in, in, in life as a child, I, I really stood still and, and was quiet because, you know, I was hiding a lot of my, a lot of the things that I was going through suffering, you know, not having my, my dad as, as a young man, you know, us going through our family issues as well. So I do talk a lot about things like abuse um, you know, being transparent, um, having issues with abandonment as a male, you know, um, and also because, you know, I, I grew up with five, with five sisters and no brothers, mm -hmm. you know, so my life was totally different than a lot of people's other lives, you know, so I find these conversations to be more easy to be had for me. And it took a lot for me to get here to actually write them. And I'm going to talk about the things that like, are authentic to me and my team supports it as well too and we write together and we're also writing other powerful pieces that you know that they're authentic to them because I'm also in a room with 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 four amazing women as well too so we all bring our ideas to the table and we just execute them and I, and I think that's actually really important because I mean we spoke with another director today and it's like in our community I'm just talking about the black, afro black Caribbean community a lot of these things have happened and it's only now that we're kind of shining a light on it especially what you said with pedophilia, traditionally we always thought it's not a us problem in our community or it's been a problem and it is there, but we've kind of like, oh, that's just how he is kind of behavior. So it's yeah. good that you guys are addressing these things because and even with male vulnerability, you know, it's, you're right, especially as a black male, we always got to have that armor on like what we saw in your PSA. It's a different, you and I have a different experience than a lot of other people because of, you know, heightened awareness when we were younger and things that we've been through and a, a lot of guys, that's how we can relate. So, I mean, we really appreciate that. So those are two amazing things, but what is next? I know you guys have a play that's going to be going down South. So tell us what's next for Crossfield house productions. So um, myself and uh, Sean Osborne, we wrote a piece called 94 and it's a fun piece. It's a period piece based on the nineties and pretty much, you know, when we were, when we were younger, I'm um, not sure if you can relate, but our parents used to just literally bring us to New York, drop us there or go shopping all day and stuff. And like, you know, you it, it, it would be a different experience for like a Toronto kid over there and like, you know, just the whole fast pace of the city. So, you know, so the, we have these two stuck in this place, New York, they come together and find each other there. So we 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 are exploring what love looks like in that world. You know what I mean? And, and what, you know, being in New York, how it has changed them both and what potentially they could be in the future. And, you know, we, we throw in all these throwbacks, the music, you know, we throw in some great lessons from uncle to, to, to both of them to change their lives. So that piece is called 94. We actually debuted it at Kumba Festival, um, man, top of last year before we- 2020, 2020. Yeah, top, of, top of last year, 2020, before we, we actually did a play in 2020. That's actually crazy to even think about. But yeah, we, we did it 
um, and then the world went to the world it is today. So I'm glad that we're going to get to continue the peace mm -hmm. where, it, where it left off. Well, that is great news. I'm very happy for you guys. I know, again, some of your partners, I know how hard you guys work. It's not easy, this business, especially being a Black producer, um, whether it's in theater, film, TV, whatever it is, just like us, we know you guys go through the struggles. So I really want to thank you for your time. And again, we're going to be watching and following you. So again, thank you, Merch, for your time, Troy. Thank you guys so much, man. Really appreciate y'all. Okay. And you're watching Caribbean Vibrations. Caribbean Vibrations.